What's going on here then? Another episode of Sugs in the City with a very select band of renegades. We hope to entertain you this evening. And how can we not with guests like this? The beautiful, the talented Charlene Spiteri. <laughs> They're not quite as beautiful, but just as lovely. A ex football hooligan author and now filmmaker with his director John Baird is Kaz Pennant. <laughs> So first up, the man with the machine gun delivery. It is the comedian. It's Tim Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Good How are you, Tim? Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. How are you, audience? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's a pro, he's a pro. Now, all the way from Cheam, you were brought up in Cheam, weren't you, Tim? That's right, I was, yeah. Uh, the, the fictional home of Tony Hancock. Is it a hotbed of comedy, Cheam? Um, not in a deliberate way. No, but I think there's some funny people there, but they just don't know it. <laughs> yeah. And you are renowned as the, the king of the one-liner. Uh, yeah, Tommy Cooper, you've got your, your, your Bob Monkhouses. Are these the people who influenced you? Um, well, I, I just like short jokes, you know. Velcro, what a rip-off. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Black, Black Beauty! <laughs> Black Beauty, he's a dark horse. <laughs> Aim for the gaps. Right. And how do you come up with these jokes? I know that um, Bob, of course, had his great bidding encyclopedia of, uh, of jokes. I mean, he did, didn't they've he? They've all been yeah, done, yeah. haven't they, basically, too? I mean, have they? Oh, I don't think all jokes have been done, have they? Maybe that's it, then. It's, it's over now, is it? It's the end of comedy. Is, is it, are you breaking the news to me that all jokes have been well, done? Well, no, I'm asking you the question how you come up with your own material. Well, I sit in a coffee shop somewhere and I scribble stuff down. And then I just I make up rubbish, and then I, you know, I think to myself, okay, yeah, someone gives me a coffee, and I go, it's a latte, better latte than never. Write that down. <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> and then I get home, and I think uh, I'll do that in front of people. <laughs> it's fantastic. Now, is there, a, is there are there any words in our language that cannot be punned? Well, I don't know. Are there? I don't, name, name a word that you think might not have been um, buttocks. Been, buttocks. Um, well, hmm. Let me try. But, uh, very good, yeah. Buttocks and Botox, there's something there. It's, uh, it's, uh, when I say very good, it wasn't very good, mate. Didn't get much of <laughs> the laugh, but uh, we'll get to the bottom of it, one way or the other. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, cheeky. There's another one. <laughs> but does it end up like Tourette's? I mean, are you finding yourself analysing every single conversation you have? for fear that you might have missed a pun somewhere there? Uh, sometimes people say something to me, like uh, someone once offered me some biscuits and uh, I said, C can I have two? And they said, uh, no, I said, I, well, I can't remember what happened. I just to be <laughs> 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 but, but he said, no, it's all right, you don't have to be polite. He said this phrase, you don't have to be polite. And I thought, well, there may be a joke there. And so I came up with a joke. But I, was, I was having dinner with my boss and his wife and my boss's wife said to me, she said, Tim, how many potatoes would you like? I said, I just have one. She said, it's all right, you don't have to be polite. I said, all right, then I just have one, you stupid cow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on for two hours! <laughs> and, uh, Where's your bartender? It's not tender, isn't it? Has it got any feelings? <laughs> we'll put the laughs on later. <laughs> Charlene, are you a fan of jokes? Where are you? Um, <laughs> are you a fan of jokes? I like, I like a good joke, but I'm not very good at telling them. Well, right. could you not very well tell us your favourite joke, then? Oh, my favourite. No. no, because it's just too... It's not good. Too blue, too blue. It's too blue, OK, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, I don't think it is. I'm sorry, Charles. <laughs> Later. Oh. They want us to tell us. Oh. Oh. There's some heckling at the back there. Come on. Well, no, Charlene does a, does a joke, then I must do a song. Oh. What? Oh, no. Yes. No, she yeah. hasn't done a joke, though. Well, she hasn't stuff. yet. Can you call her once that one? <laughs> you're, you're desperate to get that song in, so... Well, yeah, listen, obviously, I, can I just say, I am actually... You made the presumption Charlene sold a joke, but she hasn't. She hasn't, <laughs> and, not, and I haven't done a song yet either, how so many, we're all in the clear. How many more hints do you think we'll get for this song? Listen, I'm actually totally deaf, and uh, I never thought he'd almost say that. That's a great start. Uh, that's a great introduction to song, I always right, think. Right, yeah. so, do you want me to sing a song? Do you? Well, pass me that guitar, then I'll do a song for you. Hey! There's, there's a, a guitar love. there. Right, give it a here. Right, here we go. I'll just do a very short, it's a very short song. <clears throat> here we go. My mother speaks like this. My father speaks like this. So I speak like this. <laughs> Which can be rather embarrassing. Here we are, that's it. <laughs> right out of the way. There is actually a barber in Camden Town who's got one eye and uh, his voice goes up and down like that. I don't know why that is. But, oh, really? Um, right. Yeah, it's true. Right. But, um, yes, yeah, so maybe you should have a word with him. Now, right. um... One of my favourite... Um... So, Andrew, I did see this sign. It said, hairdressing for men. I walked in, there was a rabbit trying on clothes, and all these blokes going, yeah, very nice. <laughs> 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 I taste them. 
Because we're going we're to come to your quick fire delivery a little bit later in the show. And one of my oh, thoughts right. was, because the jokes don't sink in immediately, like that one. <laughs> right. And so when you're firing through your jokes, which I know you can at a great rate of knots, yes. do you actually worry about the laugh, or do you just pile the laughter up till the end and get it well, in one, one go? <laughs> That's a good way of doing it. I should do that. Yeah, yeah. I think it comes from just being nervous about, about the gaps between laughs. I mean, even now I'm getting uncomfortable by the fact that it's been a while since it's been a laugh. All if right. you've got an Islamic dog, Muslim. There you go. It's back again. <laughs> We're back. We're back. <laughs> now, of course, I didn't realise I may be very stupid. Your brother is Jeremy. He is, Fine, yeah, yeah. strangely enough. Yeah, he's got the same surname. That's right, yeah. Well, of course, one of the greatest moments on television in the last uh, little while was you and your brother, two of the finest minds in the entertainment industry, gathering enormous amounts of money on I'm a Celebrity... No, what was it? No, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire, yeah. You, you, well, got, you it, garnered the enormous amount of £1,000. It was, it was were the charity disappointed? <laughs> I think they were a little bit. It was the Firefighters charity, but I think you can get a couple of hoses for that, so uh, <laughs> they should be happy in the end. But it was my fault, because the question was, we got up to £20,000, and the question was, what's the middle name of Dwight D. Eisenhower? And I was convinced... It was something to do with, because uh, one of the possibilities was Donald, and I was sure it was something to do with Donald Duck, and I did a great impassioned speech about Donald Duck. It turned out to be completely wrong, and everyone said to me afterwards, it sounded so true, but it wasn't. And we dropped 19 grand straight out the window. Uh, Tim, your act is, uh, is, is, is so quick fire, you, you, you do hold the record, don't you? How, what, no, I don't hold a world record anymore. I used to what? hold the world record for most jokes told in an hour. That's what it was, and I did. It was 499 jokes. Um, and then it's, uh, and the person before me did 362 jokes. He was, his name was Erky Kolu, and he was from Estonia. I think that was his first joke, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Erky Kolu. One! <laughs> um, and then after that, someone beat me. I only, was only, I only held it for eight months, and the guy after me, 676, someone in America with, you know, literally no social life. <laughs> I think he was just barking or something. Well, I think there's every chance now. If we added up if, all the jokes you did maybe in two minutes, it was a stopwatch. Time, oh, yeah, my please, goodness. My well, I spent that stopwatch. All right, well, I'm not, I'm not aware of what I've done already, to be honest. But well, okay, I'll do it. We're not including the fabulous jokes you've already told us. If we were to time you for two minutes and see how many jokes you could get in, and then, you know, uh, multiply them to, to, to an hour, I think we could go for that record again. Are you ready, Tim? It's Five, four, three, two, one, go. So, so I went to the doctors, I said, I've got a rash. He said, I'll be as quick as I can. <laughs> oh. I said, I've got a heart complaint. He said, murmur. I said, I've got a heart complaint. <laughs> so I was reading this book called The History of Glue, and I couldn't put it down. <laughs> you see, I was born and bred in a bakery and raised in an oven. <laughs> So, um, oh, flip it I, I went down to my local department store, I said, have you got any neck curtains? He said, no, they've all got VAT on them. <laughs> oh, I said, that's gross. <laughs> um, Velcro, what a rip-off. I did that earlier, didn't I? Doesn't matter. Uh, by the way, if you've got, um, no, hang on a minute. Uh, so, so one arm butlers, they can take it, but they can't dish it out. <laughs> e exit signs, they're on the way out. Ex exit signs, they're on the way I thought you hadn't heard. You had, where's your, where's your bartender? It's not tender anyway, hasn't got any feelings. So, I was in this pub. I drank a bottle of wine, lost my file of facts, and I got arrested for being drunk and disorganised. <laughs> and the policeman said, get in the back of the van. So I got in, there's this freezer full of chalk ices and a machine called Mr Whippy. He said, not that van. <laughs> so I went to the music shop, I said, can you teach me how to read music? He said, why? I said, because I keep pronouncing it Musick. <laughs> One minute to go, come on, it was that, 14 <laughs> so far. <laughs> so I went, I went to the dentist, he said, say ah. I said, why? He said, my dog's died. <laughs> So I was in the music shop, I said, I said can, I, can I hear your guitar? He said... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I, I, went, uh, I went blind recently, I had to go to a Braille opticians, I had to feel these huge Braille letters on the wall, and they got smaller and smaller. When I got to the bottom, I said, I can't read that line. He said, I, I'm sorry, I'm afraid you're going to have to wear gloves. <laughs> But uh, this bloke said to me, he said, in fact, I said to him, I, I want to get the punchline, I said to him, I said, uh, I said, can you tell me, how, um, he, I said, can you tell what you call someone who comes from Corsica? He said, Corsica. <laughs> See, if a trouble with an all-day breakfast, you've got to eat it so slowly, haven't you? <laughs> so I went to the sweet shop, I said, do you do Twix? He said, I'm quite good at juggling. I said... <laughs> Jug wing. Jug, Jug wing. I went to Peter Express, I said, give me an American hot. Next thing I know, big fat guy, Hawaiian shirt, can somebody open a window? Ladies and gentlemen, that was 28 and a half jokes. So, oh. Tim, what's on the cards? Any more sitcoms? Look, you got questions. Oh, I see, right. You have any more questions. Oh, right. What's on the cards? Steven <laughs> um, oh. What's on the cards? Um, well, I'm doing, actually, I'm doing um, a show, uh, The Bloomsbury. On, uh, you seem unsure sure about this. No, I definitely am. Yeah, I definitely just, are. I was just unsure about the act earlier. Yeah. Um, that's my entire act I did there in two minutes. Um, no, July the 11th, if anyone wants to come and see me, I'm recording a DVD, so come along. And I'm doing the Edinburgh Festival as well. You're a big fan of Edinburgh. I love Edinburgh, yeah. 
I the do. place itself? In fact, I said to this Scotsman, I said, uh, did you have spots when you were a teenager? He said, acne. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been Mr. Tim Ryan. <laughs> but don't go anywhere. After the break, with music from a fabulous new album, Melody, Glaswegian's finest. It's Charlene Spiteri. Yes, it is. And a man who will forever be blowing bubbles, Mr. Cass Pennant. Don't go away.